Hi everyone. So in this lecture, let's talk about VPC, which is Virtual Private Cloud. This is a specific term used by AWS, Amazon Web Services. So VPC, if you can see my screen, right? In this uh, here, you ha we have one virtual private cloud. When I created my account, I was already given a VPC and in there I I didn't I had some default subnet but then I went ahead and created some subnet so let me show you so if you see my VPC over here I have one VPC this is my VPC ID so if you see the available CIDR range over here is for 172.31.0016 so that is the amount of IP addresses I can have in my it's only having IPv4 that's the amount of IP addresses uh, around 65,000 in my VPC so Alrighty, okay, so and then let's check how many subnets I have. So I have created some subnets earlier because I was working on creating the because I created my own um, uh, cluster, uh, Kubernetes cluster. So I had a private and public subnet. So if you see, I have five subnets over here, and they're all in the same VPC. The CIDR range I have given all 20, which is giving them around 4,000 available IP addresses. I could have given 24 to reduce that. And, but you see, I have all of them in a different availability zone. So to show the picture, let's go back here. I'm saying in this, I wanted to show just cover one availability zone. So what I'm going to do is let's create one subnet in availability zone, same VPC, but I'm going to uh, create it. My subnet, I will say a uh, priv test, right? It's just for testing Availab availability zone. I want to have one a because I want to create in the same where I have a um, public but I, I have a public subnet already so I want to create a private and I want to give CIDR uh, IPv4 in the subnet and IPv4 so I gave the CIDR range uh, I want to give 24 because I don't want that many IPs and then I don't want to put any tags for now and I'm going to create the subnet so it's going to create the subnet in a while test so it's already available and if you see uh, it has 251 available IPs it is in US East 1 so now in US East 1 region I have a private subnet and I have a uh, public subnet so now let's compare the difference so it's still kind of it's still going on so let's, okay so priv and pub so these are both the top two ones if we compare they are both uh, in US East one. So what is, how does it uh, differentiate between the two? So let's look at that. Okay, before that, let's look at the this diagram again. So we are talking about this public uh, subnet and private. So in the public subnet, uh, there is something in VPC which is called IG Internet Gateway. So every VPC has an internet gateway. If it, it has to, of course, you know, go out for the internet and the internet gateway is there is a one-to-one -one relationship between internet gateway and vpc but internet gateway itself is just a resource what it needs is a routing table that defines the routes to go outside so if you look and so, so these are my two so let's look at internet gateway first so in my this thing i have one internet gateway as it, it is attached to my vpc so there is some over here if you see there's nothing specific that you know that stands out so but when you look at my routing tables i have two routing tables so let's just focus on this one first because this is the one that i have for the public subnet so this routing table if you go on the right it is on my vpc and uh, if i just enlarge it a bit right so this one has if you see routes there if you see the routing table this is my this was my gateway right so it specifically it has a route for anything outside destination 0, .0, .0, .0 for everything going outside this network we have uh, to use the the target is this so my so any if i attach this routing table to the internet gateway then uh, that it gives me access to go outside so and if this internet gateway is sitting on vpc so uh, in the so the way it works is if you see this diagram so now you have a route to go outside so my ec2 instance anything in the public subnet will send uh, the data to internet gateway and from there it can send the data to the outside now the it does it's not the same for the private subnet because our goal is to keep 
only pub, only easy to use it's mostly public subnets are used for uh, load balancers because we don't want to keep our ec2 instances over here so that's why private subnet is where you have ec2s because we don't want to give any direct access uh, for security reasons so let's not look at uh, then we'll discuss NAT right that's where this comes into picture but for the public subnets the route to go outside is using the internet gateway so next let's explore uh, so we did um, we did look at this right yeah so we have routes and we have the details so now let uh, us explore the private how what happens in a private subnet okay so going back to the diagram if you see i made some changes so my private my nat gateway has to be in a public subnet because private subnet does not have any idea how to go out right so if you create a um, nat gateway uh, it doesn't come by default so we have to create it so I will just create it after this so so my NAT gateway if, because this public subnet already has access to internet so if my if public subnet has a route to reach the NAT gateway then it's it will be able to reach the internet through the NAT gateway so let me go to this console so let me go back I was trying to okay so let's go back to VPC so this is my VPC. If you see, there is no NAT gateway as of now. So my VPC has subnets, five subnets. One of the one we are looking at is region US region uh, region A, where we have two private subnets: one private, one public. So public is able to reach the internet because we have the internet gateway, but private doesn't. So we'll have to create a NAT gateway. So let's go to the NAT gateway section and let's say create a NAT gateway. I will just give test. yeah because i'm going to delete it just after this i don't want to be charged for it and i don't want to keep a nat gateway you know in my class uh, in my environment so we have to pick up the uh, subnet so this was my public i have to pick up public because it's in us east region one and then i want a public and nat gateway always requires a elastic ip so i think i have one yeah so i created early otherwise you can allocate so now elastic ip is also charged uh, you know we are charged for it that's why uh, i try to you know keep this down so just with this i will create the nat gateway so if now you see the nat gateway exists so now uh, my routing table let's look at my so i will have to add routes right now let's go to the private routing so this my public routing table is all good still there is no change but if you go to the private uh, routing table this one let's look at that so this one uh, I was uh, this is a black hole so initially I what I this says is that there is no route right to go outside for this private uh, for so for any subnet that is using this routing table there is no route outside so let me look at my NAT gateways this is the one zero four zero BD no, so I have to change it because this was from the earlier exp example I was doing. So let me go back to my routing table. So this won't work, right? So this is my private and I have to edit it. So I will edit my route and instead of this, I'm going to, I should actually just remove this and I will add route for anything going outside. And now I can pick the NAT gateway. So it already figured, okay, this is my test gateway we just created and I have to it's not active yet but then i'll just save my changes and now it will be now it will exactly uh, look at uh, sorry now it will exactly look at uh, look like what we were trying to do here now i created a, route, a routing table which says my private subnet which is a mic has access to go outside 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 slash show it has to use the that gateway that i just created so now my private instances will have access to so before ending just a quick thing also is about the security groups and there's something called network acls access control list so this is basic so there is some so in this diagram i always had one as sg1 sg2 right these are security groups so every ec2 instance has to have associated itself with the security groups so we can have even this sg1 over here but the basic idea is is it's a set of rules which define if the if there is even access allowed so if there is no access allowed for as per if there's a rule no access is allowed for the in the uh, for in the if there's a rule then traffic even hit the traffic even won't hit the out uh, the ig outside the subnet 
outside the subnet so that for inside the subnet there is a security group but then there is something called NACL which sits outside the subnet and NACL is it defines uh, it's also a set of uh, rules that defines but it's for the whole subnet so if we look at our uh, and NACLs are stateless and uh, security groups are stateful so if we look at our diagram over here I have I have only one ACL that was initially created by default I don't I didn't create it but basically if you see it has inbound rules that allow all traffic from IPv6 IPv4 everything is allowed similarly outbound is everything is allowed specific if some specific mostly uh, we don't use I don't I haven't really played much around with NACLs but they are basically uh, just uh, you know another set of uh, restrictions if you want to use but basically I have mostly as uh, security groups play a very important part because here we define our rules you know what is allowed what is not and then after that uh, and then you attach the security group with the EC2 instance.